Welcome back to the Electrify podcast, brought to you by the creators of Electrify Expo, North America's largest EV festival coming to a major city near you. Thanks for joining us here. A very special guest. This gentleman, I'm just going to call it right out of the gate. He's been racing before I was born. This gentleman, <laughs> RFP, or the Rocket as he's known, uh, a journalist for Motor Trend. If you know racing, if you know sports car racing, any sort of racing, Pikes Peak Hill Climb, all of it. This gentleman is the Swiss Army Knife. Well, he's not Swiss. He's, I mean, the the flying moose what what are you actually randy what what nationality are you american american hell yeah there we go yeah but my my last name popst there's a bst and there's only one language that would ever put those letters together german i got a lot of german Uh but i'm a i'm a western european mutt got some french got some dutch got some english and a fair amount of german and a, and a lot of 10W30 running through your veins. High high octane fuel. Yeah. Also joining us here is Drew, senior product planning manager for Yokohama Tire. Because like I said, uh, we're, we're talking, you know, not primarily EV, but we're talking motorsports. We're talking performance, but we're talking about efficiency. Because, Randy, you've been running Yokohama Tires for multiple years, both on the hill. We're talking about Pikes Peak Hill Climb, one of Larry Chen's favorite races of all time. Um, I got the pleasure to announce it not last year in 23, but 22, the hundredth running. And what an absolute, again, going there for the first time and having the access to co-announce with Tanner Faust, an absolute legend himself. And then meeting you and I mean, between Zwar and Reese Millen and the Unsers and so much history. And it's so raw, just right out of the gate. want to talk about Pikes Peak because I think that place, it's the mistress, right? It's like, Babe, I'll be right back. Oh, you're going to go hang out with Pikes Peak again, aren't you, Randy? I mean, talk about your experience with with Pikes Peak and your relationship with the mountain. Well, I've always been fascinated with it because of the open road racing. Mm -hmm. I grew up with things like speed racer cartoons. And and Pikes Peak, you're living the speed racer cartoon live and real. You're on a mountain road. I don't know. Speed Racer is old, but I think kids are still watching it, right? Yeah, I think so. Cartoon I mean, cars, and they would go off the mountain and fly through the air. Well, that happens at Pikes Peak. I've I've done it personally. <laughs> and really? The way I came into that race was I always, I've always been a road racer, a, a pro road racing driver. That was my career. That was my real job for 30 plus years. And, um, we were road racing in a series called Supercars, and one the schedule came out for the year. I had this really great BMW M5 full-on race car, caged, uh, 500 horsepower, screaming six-cylinder. And we get the series, and I'm looking at this. I'm going, oh, okay, we're going to Laguna Seca, Watkins Glen, Sebring, Pikes Peak Hill Climb, Sonoma. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Pikes Peak Hill Climb. I'm I'm a road racer. This is a road race series. Well, that's what it was. That I mean, I couldn't believe it. You're going to take a bunch of us road racers. It was dirt back then, mm-hmm. all dirt. Now it's pavement, and I loved every minute of it. It's still the best thing I ever did with a car because of the dirt. <laughs> yeah. It, it was drifting before drifting was a thing. Dirt, right, right. I've learned that dirt is all around better than pavement. <laughs> I really Ooh, love it. Wow, we, we're going on record. Here yeah. we go, dirt is better than pavement. The drifting. Okay. And this is way back in 1995. We had a wonderful experience. We could do a whole show about that one. Yeah. But 20 years later, I got opportunities just cropped up to go back. And it was now paved and a very different animal paved and very much more in my wheelhouse. And I've loved it. The thrill, the challenge, the danger, the the lack of practice, the changing conditions. You never know what you're going to get, even on pavement. It, yeah. It's constantly changing. And man, I enjoy that. I enjoy enjoy the risk and trying to play it smart and do the best I can do. 14 miles, roughly 12 and a half miles and 160 corners. Very, very difficult to memorize all that and know which corner is coming next. 
just simply knowing which corner is coming and then trying to figure out all the apexes. And I've run, I believe, eight times. And it took about six times until I started figuring out apexes. <laughs> I hate to admit oh, that. Oh, come on. Come it's on. It's the truth. Okay. It's the truth. So the well, thrill and danger and challenge of open road racing, uh, kind of like another event called the Targa Newfoundland that I just yeah. did last year and intend to do again. But the Targa, you got 300 miles of stages, 300 yeah. miles. Pikes Peak is 12 miles, but straight up a 14,000 foot high mountain. Unbelievable. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's an absolute legend. There's, there's those races that, you know, Isle of Man, you know, uh, there's just different, different races, right? So uh, a segue into your Pikes Peak relationship, Drew, I'm going to bring you in as well, because we wanted to talk EVs, but also, like I said, performance and efficiency. And, and, you know, Randy, you drove notably the unplugged performance model three, you crashed it, you went off the mountain, you fought back. And that that's the perseverance that you have in unplugged performance. But rubber where the rubber meets the road or as randy just said he says hey dirt might be better than asphalt and he just put it out there but how important is is a race tire even with ev and then also yokohama debuting their new tire that's ev specific drew why uh, randy i'm gonna go back to you but drew bringing you in here why an ev specific tire what's 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 that yeah i mean evs have unique performance requirements um they're heavy from all the batteries. They have a very high amount of torque that pretty much gets delivered in just instantly. Um, and in some cases, you know, they end up wearing out the tires much quicker. Um, so, you know, both on the mountain and on the road, you do need kind of specific tires to really work with the platform. Um, on the road, we really focus on a tire that lasts a long time. Um, Teslas are notorious for wearing out their tires quickly. A lot of complaints in the market. Our dealers hear it. You read it on the forums. You see it in the feedback. And you know, when your tire wears out in 30,000 miles, you're, you're not too, too happy, you're not a happy customer. So we developed a road tire that, miles? yeah, right? in some cases, even, <laughs> even more, right. They're, they're notorious yes. for it. Yes. Um, so making a tire that lasts a long time was something we focused on on the mountain, different set of challenges. One of my all time favorite events as well, going to Pikes Peak, uh, never went in the dirt, unfortunately, but my first time up there was actually with the first Tesla to run and you know, Blake Fuller back in the day, I think, you know, 2016 or so. And yep. like you were saying, Randy, ever since then, I've just been hooked with, you know, going to Pikes Peak, spending two weeks of June of every year out there and, um, you know, really challenging to kind of make our tires perform and, and do well in the mountain. Yeah. And that, and that, and that Randy, you can attest to this. I mean, your, your accolades, I'm looking at your, you know, your Wikipedia just for reference, but I mean, you've raced everything from Porsches to, to Volvos, SCCA talking about tri-point Mazda to sixes. I mean, you've won multiple championships and, and your, your accolades go on and on. And, and I'm not, not joking about the age thing. I mean, you've been racing since 77. And I think that's a testament to one, your spirit of, of living and going fast and your, your adrenaline and, and, and keeping you moving, man. You you got jokes we've i mean you did cletus mcfarland's event you know freedom factory i think this is all speaks to your brand of having fun but in all seriousness how crucial given all of your accolades how crucial is your relationship with the tire man and machine in synchronicity the only place that that vehicle touches the ground are those contact patches how critical is it to have a high performance tire and then also how does that high performance high performance tire translate into road vehicles that you drive down down to the cafe. Jared, you absolutely nailed it. Tires are the only thing touching the ground. Tires are the single most important factor on a race car. And guess what? So is efficiency. And what I mean by that is in a race, you want to go as fast as you possibly can without using everything up, without burning it down. If the tires don't last, if the car doesn't last, in order to finish first, you must first finish. And a driver can overwork his race car, tires, everything, and maybe be fast for a few laps and then slow down. You got to be fast on the last lap. And even in short races, this is true. So efficiency is an important part of racing a car. And Drew, I know you know about this because you're involved in the, so closely in the tires with Yokohama. The, the tires have got to be able to perform, but they've got to perform over the time. And drivers are constantly cracking that whip like a jockey beating the hindquarters of his horse. 
And so the whole car, especially the tires, need to be able to stand up to the run. And this is one of the challenges we have at Pikes Peak. It's a short run, but it's steep and it's fast. And there's a tremendous amount of braking. Those hairpins, the W's, you're like left, right, left, right. You're climbing a mountain. I think it's as much as a 12% grade, as I wow. recall. And so it's very hard on the tires and the brakes and the conditions change constantly. You never know what the temperature's gonna be. You never know what the weather's gonna be. And I love all those factors and trying to balance it and make it all work. Uh, racing is, is not just a, a crazy thing like hitting a hammer as hard as you can. It's much more like a dance. It's like yeah. dancing with the stars. <laughs> you've got to be smooth and you've got to be re refined and smart about what you're doing or yeah. you're not going to make it to the finish line. And the tire loose is fast, Cole, right? The old, the old, yeah, buddy. yeah. Fast, it'll hold, Cole. it'll hold. <laughs> yeah, sure. You're on the phone over there. I'm the one in the car, but uh, all that comes together in uh, the on, it's It's based on the foundation of the tire, everything builds from that, yeah. And and just looking at some of these stats on this new. Ad, uh, excuse me, Advan Sport EV AS covers 91% of all the Tesla tire size. So anybody listening here wondering about an option for tires, Yokohama has this EV specific, covers all this. And I'm looking at the stats here, Drew, and if you want to rattle these off or, or if you want me, I think this just bears repeating. It sounds like a flyer in an infomercial, but we're going to be blatant. We're going to hit you over the head. Why the heck are we talking EV and tires and all this? And Randy talks about that performance, but again, it does translate and trickle into everyday tire usage because of attrition and all that, Drew. Yeah, so with our advanced sport EV AS, we focused on um, looking at the what the Teslas did to tires, right? We did all of our development on Teslas. We looked at the OE tire and we directly benchmarked against the OE. And we developed a tire that lasts 35% longer than your original equipment tire, right? And that's huge. So. You know, when you're talking 30, 35K, your tires uh, wear out, our tire has a mileage warranty. So we guarantee the performance for 55,000 miles. So repeat that, that number again. One. Repeat that <laughs> 55, again, Drew. 55,000 <laughs> yeah, 55, mile yeah. warranty. Tread wear that's, warranty. I mean, that's yep. huge. Yeah. That, yeah I mean, you know, it's industry leading for EV replacement tires. Uh, we confirmed it with where real mileage testing on Teslas and you know, so that was our number one focus. We matched the OE tire in pretty much every category in wet, dry, um, you know, the all season kind of performance, small trade-offs in, in range, but you know, single digits, barely noticeable, uh, but really focusing on the wear to make the, the just to give that value to the, basically the customer that, that's fed up with tires wearing out so fast. And Randy, you can probably talk to this about why the EV tire is, is they burn through them a lot. The car's heavy. I mean, you've raced cars for a long time, and you're like a buck twenty soaking wet there, Randy. You throw that in the cockpit. I'm joking, um, but um, you, surprise. You're a tall. You're a tall Need gentleman. Secret. You're. you're yeah, exactly. He leans down. I saw Randy the other day. He's one of those sweatsuits getting stronger. Um, <laughs> but but the EVs are so dang heavy with all these batteries. And let's so let's again. I love going back and forth. It's kind of like OE Drew. And then high performance Randy. So no offense, Drew. I know you like race cars and we partied at Nitro Cross and all these things before, but oh, yeah. the batteries is such a big factor. You know, you going from your Volvos, Porsches, Audis, which you're a factory sport driver, into this unplugged performance, Model 3, you climb that mountain, you're managing weight in a different way. And also talking about the ICE engine going to EV, that was a total game changer. You know, seeing Dumas and what he's done. I mean, batteries as opposed to ICE. Go for it, Randy. Well, if we look at electric cars, the street cars, check the stock tire pressures. On my Model S, the recommended pressure, it's on the door. We all have it on every car we drive. You look on the door there, pressure for the cars you drive are probably 30, 32, 35 maybe. In my Tesla, 45. Mm -hmm. And what that pressure tells us is the load that these tires have got to carry along with a desire to keep the drag load to make them efficient. They're heavy. They need a lot of air in the tires to support that load. And 
that's what wears the tires out, combined with an incredible amount of power, depending on which Tesla you have. Mine is, I think, the slowest Tesla. It's 380 horsepower, but kind of like a diesel engine and an electric motor, the power is not really accurately measured by the horsepower, it's measured by the torque. And torque is what you feel. So when you put your foot down in my Tesla, 380 horsepower, it goes like crazy and my chest is pushed back into the seat. It feels so good and it's instantaneous. And that is hard on the tires. My Tesla is actually a rear wheel drive too. It's not driving all four. It's a, it's a single motor and it's driving only two tires and that increases the wear. And a lot of the Model S's, especially the early ones like mine, are um, something in their alignment. They came out with a ton of negative camber, especially in the back. Hmm. And um, if I can shoot my buddies an unplug, unplugged a plug is I've got these upper control arms that are adjustable to stand the tires up more, reduce the camber, makes a huge difference in handling and everything else. Tesla did so many things right, but something funky came out in, in the <laughs> early cars in their negative camber, especially in the back. And yeah. so between that and Tesla had a real emphasis on high performance in their street cars. They handle great. They're firm. They're not squishy and, and like, like an old Cadillac. They're, they handle. And mm -hmm. these elements contributed to the quick tire wear. I mean, I've heard 10,000, Drew, uh, 5,000 from aggressive drivers. So Jeez. this kind of additional wear is a real boon to Tesla owners because the power and the weight take their toll on the tires. It's, it, I mean, the, the conversation goes on and about Yokohama and, and what goes on. I, I'm, I'm still flirting with Pikes Peak. Again, just uh, talking about Cletus McFarlane, you know, you got second overall and just fun races, but you're a racer just through and through, man. You'll you'll race a lawnmower, and I'm not even talking the riding one. I'm just talking pushing because my man, <laughs> my man gets down. And but True. the conversation, you know, I know, I know. And uh, so the conversation about EV and ice, you know, we, we it always comes up. And you being a racer, you're you know, you're a vegetarian. It kind of speaks into your brand and all these things, right? What's your take on that transition from ice over to EV? I mean, the 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 hill climb record, like I talked about, Romain Dumas, he he he's killing it, and he did a great job in that technology. So all the naysayers coming from a tried and true racer that's raced damn near everything under the sun. What's what's your what's your rebuttal? Somebody says, I don't know that EV. It's it's gonna go away. It's a fad. What do you say to those naysayers? Well, in terms of the race car, the big difference is really very simple. Sound. The electric cars don't have an exhaust note. And this is a really big factor that one that was maybe even not fully understood until electric cars appeared. And I mean, I've always loved the sound of a, of a good exhaust note, and I still do. The other factor that I don't think ice people understand is the awkward slowness of shifting gears. Electric cars have most, all Teslas I know of have only one gear, <laughs> no gear, because the electric motors have such a great spread of torque, no gears. So I own nine um, ice cars, gasoline powered cars and truck. And I go back and forth to my electric car. And those are the two things that hit me. One, the sound is different. And two, I hate downshifts because downshifts are incredibly unsmooth, even in the best automatics, except maybe a CVT, which is a little bit like an electric right? car. And yep. guess what? Most of us hardcore ice guys hate CVTs too because we like the shifting. We like the feel of the power coming on and that pulling those gears. I love it. I have 13 motorcycles that are all 
gas powered, and that all have very, very different torque curves and exhaust notes. I love it. So I love them both. And when I started tracking electric cars, I did three laps and I didn't miss the sound anymore because I'm trying to go as fast as I can. And this is what a racer does. You, you figure out what you got in terms of power and handling, and you figure out how to use it to go as fast as you can, turn the best time you can on the watch. And electric cars, the Teslas specifically, at Unplugged Performance Tesla course, so they have a, a Tesla electric car track day. The torque is so beautifully delivered that, and is so easy and is so fast. And most Teslas are all wheel drive. So you have this combination of incredible torque and incredible traction off a corner. Two things that every racer loves, whether you hear it or not. Yeah, I miss the exhaust notes. Yeah, I love the incredible instant torque, which Drew already mentioned, just nail it. And no gears, no shifting. When you want to go, you just put your foot down whoop, and whoop, you're there. You are right. there. I, I did some consulting once. Shall I name names? I will name names. Drop um, it. <laughs> I do a lot of consulting with different electric car companies. Or not electric, sorry. All cars. Toyota, Lexus, Hyundai, Porsche, on and on. Over the years, different brands. Well, I did some work for Lexus a few years ago. They wanted to know uh, why their, um, well, gosh, what's the high performance Lexus? The uh, HF. Yeah. The, well, the F is like their M there. Yeah. 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 And so I took one for a drive and then I sat down with some of their engineers to discuss the car. And I told them a story. I'm in the Lexus. It has this wonderful four liter, 400 and something, 60 horse uh, V8 eight speed automatic transmission. Are we and, talking about the LFA, the LFA, the V10? No, no. Okay. It, okay. It's the, um, I should know this. ISF? ISF. ISF. Thank you very much. There we go. We and, got there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 400 and I think there's now is a 430. I'm coming up an on-ramp in this car. Beautiful car. Handles well. Sounds glorious when the revs are up. And I'm in Southern California. And I see, I'm coming up the on-ramp, I see a hole in traffic. And I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna hit that. But I'm not in sport or anything, I'm in a regular, and I gas it. The first thing the car does is slow down because it's downshifting about literally five gears. And so it goes, huh, blah, <laughs> like this. And I'm like, oh my God. Well, in that moment, of the downshifts, the hole closes. Somebody else gets it. And I realized with an electric car, I could have just, poo, you're there. You are there. It's like you're being beamed into the next place. This is one of the good things about driving an electric car, especially in traffic. Yeah. And I mean, the downshifts sound great, but boy, now they feel absolutely archaic. Right. After driving an electric car for a while, you get in a gas car. Oh, man, that sounds good. Yeah. Oh, I want to take this guy. Burr. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're like, holy <laughs> cow. Uh, it's it's just conditioning, right? But but what I, it's conditioning. Oh, yes, it's what right. you're used to. No, I'm just saying it's, yeah. it's what with ice, it's what you're used to. And that I'd love to get, you know, most recently Larry Chen was on the podcast and he was talking yeah. about he misses the shifting. He misses the audio. That's what his conundrum is. And that's the, that is just the, it's the elephant in the room every dang time when we talk to EV. And, you know, here's even exhaust companies manufacturing speakers that make particular noises and stuff like that. So I think we're on the, the precipice of acknowledging that, but also when, when like, say, Matt Farah was on here and he had a great point of taking this big Cadillac and getting rid of that crappy whatever engine you don't even care about, just a gas guzzler, putting that EV in there, it's a different experience. But it's, and this is the other thing that always comes up, just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Like you said, that that freeway cruiser, you find that hole. Here's Racer Randy. The rocket just finds that hole and just jams it right in there. There we go. And then, but in regards to, like, 
your your experience you're saying hey there's a time and a place you got that instant torque you got this experience but I, you're really you're kind of speaking to to my language where it's hey I, I have respect for this i have respect for that you're a big you know jdm guy you like japanese bikes you like cafe racers you're yeah. kind of you like it all man which which i think is such a better take and this is why i love having you on this podcast because we're intended to talk about tires but we're talking about all of it because it's your relationship you've raced again from the k-pax porsches to i mean just everything in between i kind of want to segue back to back to yokohama and the tires um drew anything else to add in regards to just this advan what yokohama tires doing the e plus rating the badges um the development and anything else that will people go like what like what yokohama did all this for for us just so we can drive further yeah, you know, a big focus on you know electric vehicles since they are such a growing trend in the United States and kind of globally. Um, so we are taking this advanced sport EV all season and expanding it to beyond just Teslas. You know, we picked the top ten Tesla sizes. Now we're looking at the Ford Mustang Mach E's, the high, uh, the you know Hyundai's that are coming out, and all of the key fitments. And yeah, you mentioned the E Plus. So this is a, a marking we we developed specifically for tires, which are developed for EVs on EVs. So E plus in our case, it means it's it's plus miles, it's more miles, but it really stands for you know just dedication to EV development, um, developing on an EV vehicle, not an internal combustion. You see a big difference in performance, but also the way the tire wears going from a three series to a model three, for example, which is what we use for development. Um, but beyond that, you know, we're doing a lot of EV motorsports. You know, you mentioned Nitro Cross earlier, so. In my opinion, I think most would agree the coolest EV motorsport out there. You know, nothing compares to what these cars are doing on track um, and just the performance of the FC1X. And we had similar issues when we the first test we did on the FC1X, our tires just, you know, <laughs> separated, delammed. The, the rubber just ripped off. They had so much torque that they couldn't even go you know, a few laps. So there's a big development that we led on that side just to get a, a tire that could hold up to the torque. Um, for a rally, an electric rallycross car that's on dirt, it's on gravel, it's on tarmac, and they, they're kind of just the way I describe, just tire destroying machines. And we had a couple, one or two seasons where we had a lot of tire issues. And if you remember last season, we resolved the issue, we improved the product, we really put all of our development um, effort into making a tire just to hold together, just to take the torque of the FC1X. So really across the board with Yokohama, you know, we do all forms of motorsport. Most are internal combustion, but we do have a big focus on electric as well with, you know, Nitro Cross, just like I said, being the, the coolest EV racing series out there. Well, yeah, we appreciate it. And again, having the pleasure of announcing Nitro Cross for multiple years and now in our second season with what Drew is calling the FC1X. Randy, I'd love to get you in one of those vehicles, get get you out there. Have, have, have you... Like, have you jumped a car? Like, because I know, let's just call it like it is. Jensen Button says, I'm good. Like, here's an F1 champ. He was about to do jump testing. He's like, I'm good. I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep it where the rubber meets the road, the, either it be asphalt or dirt. But have, have you ever jumped a car, Randy? Like, like I've jumped one accidentally. <laughs> I, speak. I sent a really great run in Nissan GTR right off the cliff. And because I just simply didn't remember the road, I didn't have enough sleep all week. I got my excuses. I wasn't running oxygen at the time, oh, which no. is a big help at yeah. 12,000 feet. And, uh, but no, I've actually through my video world, I've done a uh, short track, uh, well, I guess you call them stadium trucks. Yeah. And uh, not in a real race, but making a video, running the short track, jumping them. Loved yeah. it, want okay. more. That was another one of my corruptions with dirt. I'm like, man, this stuff is great. <laughs> well, yeah, I've done it. And you remind me of a story I saw. Two of my buddies, Travis Pastrana and um, Tanner Faust, I just yeah. saw them on TV at some sort of rally cross. I don't know exactly the event. I think it was in Utah. And they had a big jump. And these two guys have been around. You know, they're top guys. They're talking to each other on camera. They're like, yeah, Travis, why don't you go out there and uh, show me show me what it's like? You know, and oh, Tanner, how about you take a shot at that and let me know what you think? <laughs> it was a big jump, right? And then they did it every lap, every lap. But you're always hoping that on the way up that ramp, the car runs good the whole way. Because <laughs> if you're halfway up the ramp and the engine blows, 
Mm. Yep. It's yeah, a thrill. It's, I mean, it, it, it is a thrill, and that's that's kind of why you're here, man. And and again, um, don't you haven't ran out of talent yet? You know what I mean? And and safety is number one priority. We sensationalize, you know, because of that risk, you know, and 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 you know, seeing obviously Leah Block drive up, you know, RIP Ken Block, you know, running up the Pikes Peak Hill climb. Nitro Cross is absolutely insane. Um, Randy, we got to get you to the finals. Nitro Cross coming up here uh, first weekend of March, Las Vegas, the finals, round nine and ten. Maybe tap Travis on the shoulder and say, hey, give me the keys. And uh, <laughs> I'd, lo I'd, lo I'd love to see you one of those cars, man. I mean, it's such a – so have, have you been to Nitro Cross yet and seen the FC1X? No, only oh, on yeah. TV. Yeah, well, we'll get you out there. We'll get we'll get we'll get you out there. And unfortunately, we just had a a race in Calgary, but it was unseasonal. The weather's crazy. It's it's dumping rain in California, and then it doesn't snow in Calgary. So um, we had a little bit of ice racing, but Baja Bugs, um, next cars, and then again Yokohama tire, uh, two thousand dollars per tire on those studded jams, Drew. Like I mean, how many three hundred plus? I mean, they are stout. yeah, almost four hundred studs. Stout. We call them spikes, not studs, mm -hmm. and we have to. We have them made in, I believe, Sweden. So we ship tires over there. They're studded. They ship them back. Um, yeah, it was it was a challenge just to find uh, someone who can make a tire perform on ice. Um, uh, and yeah, they just tear through the ice. So like you said, unseasonably warm. Just if you don't have, you know, I think it's you know a meter of ice, so three feet worth of ice, the cars are just going to rip through it, uh, you know, within a couple sessions. So. Um, yeah, the, the, we we don't really mark up those tires very much. It's just the shipping and the the, the yeah. studding costs that we have to you know push onto the racers, but they're very expensive. Yeah, we're not trying to sensationalize the cost, but I'm just saying logistically that was it, it's it's a fun race to see. Um, it, it was our only ice race this season. Unfortunately, it, it turned into a non points round, but Nitro Cross in general, Randy, I, I think you would do really really well there. Outside of you know one one you know being on the dirt racing electric vehicle which you're obviously very familiar with that power band in that tighter course so here's this like i said you're the swiss army knife man i, th I think you could i think you could do all right but it's it's a different I sensation and right i think you do great man you should really come to vegas i'll i'll put in a good word i'll tell travis that good. that we spoke because tanner's good. tanner you know he's on yoke but he's not uh he's not running He's not running nitro cross right now. What um you talked about going off the mountain, man. Again, like not sensationalizing the cost of things, not sensationalizing the 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 crashing, but also, hey, uh, oh man, sports car magazine, last issue going out. Our man uh Paul Fanner. You know, you had a long time yeah. article there. Shout out to Paul Fanner and uh, yeah. and Racer Magazine. But you've had an article in there for a long time. SCCA plays yeah. a major role in your career and in your life and, and all that. And I think, you know, Yokohama and the EVs, this is a, a great tire and a compliment to them. Again, talking about sports car and racing, but SCCA and your relationship there, because that's kind of entry level for anybody listening that has either an EV or an ice vehicle getting out there, sports car. Hey, EVs are perfect autocross cars. They're unbelievably good. Autocross if for listeners is racing through a parking lot in a course that is arranged with traffic cones. And it's a fantastic way to learn how to drive fast because you don't hit walls. You don't go off cliffs. You, all you do is hit a pylon. And this is how don't I started her. when I was 19 years old. I, I just stumbled across an event. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I can race my car in this parking lot? And back then it was five bucks. Now it's 50 plus, but that's just inflation. But interestingly, that's also how I got to know Yokohama as a top brand. In the early 80s, Yokohama created a tire called the 001R. It was a street tire that blew everybody else out of the water with its performance capability. And then they had the 008R after that. This is in the 80s. And I was, I had so much respect for what they accomplished, how good those tires were. And I've raced Yokohama tires on race tires and street tires ever since, on and off. And I've noticed Yokohama, top brand, top brand in racing and on the street. In fact, I had them on my Tesla before I put the EV Plus tires on just two weeks ago. I've been driving these tires for two weeks I went on a trip down to Florida, a bonsai run to coach a friend of mine at Sebring. And so I've driven them in all conditions and they feel like a high performance tire on my Tesla. 
the one thing that comes to my mind is uh, slip angle. Slip angle is the difference between where you're going and where the tire's going, right? These tires have very little slip angle for a 5,000-pound EV and an all-season tire. There's a very direct connection with the road that mimics what I felt in the non-EV tire. The other tire I had was an, a Yokohama Advan, but now I've got the Advan EV. I got to try them back to back. And the EV tire is right there, if not better. And I got something like 10% plus more efficiency, but I only put like 2000 miles on them. So I can't really tell you about the wear yet, <laughs> but so far that is a high performance tire. I don't feel any compromise wet or dry in its performance capability, direct response. You turn the wheel and that car goes. Teslas are good at that too, because they may be heavy, but that weight is low, low, low. And mm -hmm. it's what makes them such a great autocross car. Low center of gravity, there's not as much weight transfer when you're cornering at the limit. as There's a direct relationship between the height of the center of gravity and the amount of weight transfer which means a car with a low center of gravity is using more of its inside tire than a car with a higher center of gravity. And Teslas are really good at that. And they are amazing autocrossers. And, and that's what's cool is because, you know, they're the Miatas were just kind of the go to Civic, you know, CRX is back in the day, EF, you know, and, and that those, you know, S2000 is obviously lower, the lowest center of gravity of any vehicle. And then it got superseded by the FR86. Right. So the Scion BRZ. Right. And now Toyota 86. Um, great, car. it, great cars. Right. But now the conversation begins of here's Randy Pope's co-signing and saying, hey. Tesla's they're they're now available the three series or depending on your budget S obviously I don't think a Y or an X is going to be a great you know autocross car but that that's what's really cool man I I love your testimonial um, in regards to motorsports the tire the conversation and the relationship you have with Yokohama Tire and you know it, it, it now again full circle talking about we started with Pikes Peak going back Romain Dumas you know that IDR what what an absolute weapon you know I mean the the inclusion of EV, maybe talk about ice compared to EV because of air, thin, you go higher, you talk about the you running oxygen, well, the car needs to run oxygen unless it's EV, but you do have power suck and power drain. So all of those things come into play and had the, had the pleasure of talking to you right after you got off the mountain, it was foggy, you're wiping the windscreen. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And, you know, uh, but talk, talk about that, man. Talk about the cars and the introduction of EV into the hill? Electricity doesn't care what the altitude is. Mm -hmm. Gas engines absolutely do. And one of the many, many challenges at Pikes Peak is the race starts at 9,000 feet of altitude. And, you know, we hear, always hear about Denver being the mile high city. You can't breathe. Cars are street ice cars are genuinely slow. And, Denver, that's 5,000 feet. Now we're going to 9,000 feet for the start line, and the finish line is 14,000 feet. There's no air up there. If you've ever visited, you can't walk across the parking lot. I mean, people get sick because they're not getting enough oxygen. Uh, I, I have to deliberately start breathing deeper when I'm up on top of that mountain. I've been up there a lot, so I know. And Ice cars, the regular engines are the same way. Well, there's an answer for that. Turbocharge. You get a little turbo to pump that air in there. But guess what? You're racing from nine to 14,000 feet. Where are you going to test for that? Nowhere. That's where you're going to test for it. You, so it's very common to show up with a high-performance gasoline-powered engine and turbocharged to help make up for the altitude, but you can't test it. And many teams have a lot of trouble with keeping those, getting the right tune for as the, enter, as the air gets thinner, the turbos start going faster and faster and faster. They blow. It's a challenge. With electric cars, there's a very different challenge, and that is cooling, believe it or not. You don't lose power. That it doesn't care what the altitude is, but racing a street electric car is a challenge 
because when you move a lot of amps, think of a short circuit. Say you short circuit a battery, what happens? It's hot. <laughs> you know, the cable gets really hot. So that's a challenge. And I was racing Tanner this year, well, 23. Tanner Faust was in a gasoline powered Lotus thing called a Radford. And I'm in a Tesla model uh, as a plaid. Interesting matchup. I mean, my car probably weighed twice what his car weighed, but we were neck and neck. But I knew my, my Model S Plaid was still based on a streetcar. The battery was going to get hot, and I would have a power drop, a power cut. Uh, they do that just to save the car. <laughs> it's not a race car. It's a streetcar. And we run the drivetrain right from Tesla because it's very, very difficult to modify any of that. And also, because Unplugged Performance, the uh, sponsor, and, and they're the Tesla tuner. They have a close relationship with Tesla. And so they want to respect that and not go into that battery and software and start messing around. And so there's a challenge from the power. I was neck and neck with Tanner in practice, but we only practice one third at a time. I, I knew that in the race, he probably was going to get me because part way up the hill, my Tesla was going to lose some power, even though the handling stay strong all the way up. We we're on Yokohama slicks. And I, I can't remember now, Drew, was I on the biomass tires this year? I know last year. Yeah, we did year, some, some special biomass derived rubber for your tires just to, you know, to show that we can lower our dependence on petroleum derived uh, rubber. Yeah, it's kind of like being a vegetarian eater. <laughs> they're vegetarian <laughs> tires is what I call them. Cause yeah, talk, talk about that. Cause that, that biomass in them. Uh, you know, renewable and no sacrifice in performance. They weren't worse. They were better. We had the tire. We had the tire. The frustration, though, was how do we keep the battery cool? And it's not easy. And that's what Romain Dumas had. His car was built ground up as an electric race car. So they had they had systems for that. But even this year, he ran a, a Ford EV. As yeah, super that, that van, that yeah, van is crazy. Van. It was crazy. But yeah. guess what? When he left the line, I was watching him. He left the line slow. And then once he got around the corner, he got on it. I was doing the same thing because I want to keep the batteries cool as long as possible. So even at that level in a full on race car, I'm in a street drivetrain race car. He's still being careful about the heat. It's one of the many challenges of Pikes Peak. Yeah, it's 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 talk about this tire technology because that that was interesting. So that's another conversation for those that are, as you say, eating healthy or vegetarian. Not that it's you know, I only eat chips. They're potatoes, right? I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but right, but you're talking about petroleum not only in the vehicle. Again, many people have different relationships with EV and why they do it. Are they taking care of the planet? Do they want to lower the cost? But here's Yokohama Tire taking this role. What what was it called that you ran on the on the hill this year? Yeah, I was so, racing um, slicks, and they were made with biomass. Drew, you know way more about it than me. Yeah, I just yeah. Know yeah. Randy, Randy, fast. stick to driving. Okay, stay in your lane. No pun intended. <laughs> fast, and they handled great. <laughs> but talk, yeah, so it was an effort that, to it was an effort to showcase some technology where um, we changed some of the the butadine rubber in a tire to a naturally de derived uh, rubber rather than a petroleum based rubber. It's very similar to biofuel, you know, ethanol. So that can be made from food waste or you know lumber waste or all kinds of different areas. Taking that, creating ethanol, and then we have a you know a super advanced process to convert that to butadiene rubber, right? Which is a very common material used in product in our in our tire products, which normally comes from petroleum. So yeah, uh, we did this the second year doing it. We replaced as much rubber as we could. Um, it's something we're doing in our Super Formula series as well. We keep in, you know, Super Formula is a spec open wheel series in Japan where uh, they're open wheeled cars similar to Formula One and, you know, just a couple ticks below the performance of an F1 car. And we're doing more and more renewable resources in those tires as well. And part of that is this butadiene um, or biomass derived butadiene rubber. Um, again, just, you know, there's a lot of components in a tire. There's natural rubber from, you know, latex or rubber trees, but a lot of petroleum products too. 
So anywhere we can replace it with a recyclable product or a naturally derived product, you know, just helps lower our dependence on on petroleum in the future. What a great conversation we had. And, and that and again, that what's cool about that scenario is you're not compromising the performance. So we have this good yin and yang of of Drew representing Yokohama, but Yokohama taking a stance. And Randy, you are this perfect kind of granola racer. You know, you you yeah. you know, you're veg like I said, you're vegetarian, you're healthy, you're you're kicking your spry. I mean, look at you. I mean, you're not a day over 35. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm hanging in there, buddy. No, and man, you're not hanging in there. You're, you're hanging it out there. Nothing's harder on a tire than racing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you watch a race car or drive one. <laughs> I'm still amazed that the tires can take that. Right. The, and then the, the, I, I was not familiar with this Japanese series where the cars are darn near Formula One. The, the G loads. And then the electric cars, the weight, 5,000 pound race car and the biomass tires were not, there was no compromise. They were better. They were better. And we won the year before and uh, set a record for a modified electric production car and probably would have won the next year if I could have, if I knew how to defog my windshield. <laughs> it was so frustrating, Jared. I'm yeah. in the car. And we had the defroster on, but my, my crew guy was always doing that for me. And he's punching the dash. We had the whole stock Tesla dash there. It's, it's pretty big, you know? Yeah. And he did that. And it was warm and dry inside the car. We had windows for aerodynamics, actually. And I get going, and halfway up, the weather completely changes. We literally, they call it the race to the clouds. Well, that year it really was. And the windshield starts fogging up. Last thing I expected. And I don't know how to turn up the fan. I have a defroster. I have an air conditioner for goodness sakes. But I don't know how. I'm looking at the dash. Where's where's the defroster? Well, now I know. What do you, you know what you do? You you hit the temperature button. Yeah, you hit the temperature oh, is that button. What it is? Yeah, and then the climate controls all come up. I didn't know that. I got beat by David Donner, great guy. He and his family have a long history of winning at Pikes Peak. And I talked to him. He was in a Porsche, a streetcar. And we're talking after the race. He goes, oh, yeah, I was sitting out the line. I looked up at that mountain, and I turned the defroster all the way up. <laughs> I'm going, you're the man. You're the man. I should have. So that was a huge challenge. But you know what? The tires were good all the way into the ice and snow. Totally not designed for that, Drew, but they worked. <laughs> That's one good thing about 5,000 pounds. You can generate tire temperature. <laughs> mm. that, that's interesting. Yeah, you talk about the heat cycle. And again, this that that's a testimonial to you and and when you did go off you went there's there's a funny fact not funny i'm i say funny because you de the in 2020 you went off the mountain in in this model three you went from 112 to 68 miles per hour to the bottomless pit is is what your wikipedia page is saying the car went off the road hit a wall at 40 miles per hour the, but right. the perseverance you fought back like david horowitz and the you put team. the car back together yeah, the team, unplugged performance, four days, night and day, yep. including a Tesla service center in Colorado Springs. Yep. Got That's that cool. car and back to the start line. It was amazing. Only a few more moments left, Randy and Drew. Um, Drew, most recently, King of the Hammers, went down and saw, un speaking of unplugged and Tesla, Cybertruck out there on Yokohama, off-road, looked like unplugged, got a little too nuts. There's some photos of it going ham and breaking some stuff, putting it through the R&D, research and or rip and develop. Um, how, how was that getting yokes on the on the cyber truck out there? At, were, you, were you out there, Drew? I didn't go out this year, but yeah, I was following along pretty closely. Uh, yeah, obviously the, the cyber truck broke and kind of blew up on the internet a little bit, but the tires <laughs> held together great. We put our uh, Geolander XAT on, which is, you know, really a aggressive all-terrain basically i mean the cyber truck comes with essentially a 35 20 to begin with so um you have a little bit of room to go you know a little bit uh larger uh without you know, having to modify the vehicle i know in plugs working on lift pits and trying to put 37s on them as well but yeah we're definitely you know we're working with cyber trucks and rivian so you know this ev space on the the light truck side is only a couple of years old and 
right now, you know, we're, we're proving our, a lot of our existing products, you know, work really well. And if in some cases hold up better because they don't have any compromises from the, that the OE needs for rolling resistance, but yeah, giving a stronger sidewall to these products than, than what they come with uh, to the EV vehicles. Um, but yeah, just seeing it rip around, do donuts in, in the sand and at King of Hammers was pretty awesome. Yeah, just overall, Yokohama's got your got your tread in every every motorsport and to the OE and that, you know, Yokohama for me, just growing up a JDM kid, you know, I had a, uh, an EK Civic hatch back in the day and the Advan logo and the livery, just just an homage. But Yokohama constantly developing, work, working with Chris Forsberg Racing, doing Nora with Leticia Buffani, doing the side by side stuff. You're the spec tire on the Can-Am series and Nitro Cross. We'll see you back there in Vegas. Um, as we wrap up here, Drew, anything else you want to add in regards to Yokohama, technology, EV, anybody listening to Electrify Expo? Obviously, we'd love to see you at all the Electrify Expos um, through this 24 season. But anything else you want to add, Drew? Yeah, you know, Yokohama, we're a full line supplier, which means now we have dedicated EV tires to go along with all of our other products. Uh, we race in you know, Pikes Peak, Nitro Rally Cross. A Baja 1000, we developed 40 inch trophy truck tires, you know, really across the board, full line supplier, but also motorsports is a huge part of our, our, our history and our strategy and really helps us develop leading products and, you know, compete at the, the world's highest stage. Um, yeah. So pretty much anywhere you see people racing, whether it's EVs, internal combustion or anything else, you'll see, you know, Yokohama tires out there. Same thing on the road, full line supplier for your minivans, for your CUVs, SUVs, light trucks, passenger car, even going truck and bus radial. You know, we, we really we make a tire for almost everything. So check us out, you know, full line supplier and really dedicated to you know, high quality products, keeping you safe, but keeping uh, high performance as well. Yeah, Yokohama's done some great things over the years. Like I said, had a you know, there's so many different tire manufacturers out there, and it's just like vehicles. What is the solution to your transportation performance what what are you looking for and i love the the e plus badging that's ev specific we are talking here on electrify news um thank you so much drew for what you've done randy in closing here thank you so much for your time man again you're an absolute legend like i said we've we, prior to his us uh, hitting record i'm like hey remember when we got drunk at cletus mcfarland's place and that yeah that was me we played ping pong we we're the last two survivors at cletus <laughs> that was you and i bud and i had to remind him <laughs> fun guys. but then, but then fun he guys. went on yeah the, the, we're the mushrooms here we're the fun guys um yeah. <laughs> sorry dad jokes um I, I so like but but you went on to get second place at the freedom factory the second oh running is of, that of the, close almost that won close. that race yeah, and and you're all about having fun, but you're all also about winning, man. So, um, what else you got cooking? Where can people find out info? Of what you got going on? Buy some Randy Pope's gear or, or anything you want to plug here. Obviously, Yokohama Tire, but in closing, yeah. you're too kind, Jared. I am Randy Pope's. It's good to have a name nobody else has, and I'm Randy Pope's on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and X, and I'm I'm posting and I do. Uh, videos with the Haggerty YouTube channel with a guy named Jason Camisa. You probably know Jason. He's a genius. He's so funny. He's outrageous. And he's really smart and knowledgeable about automobiles. We just did a video about Cybertruck. It's oh fantastic. It kind of reminds me of EV a little bit. It, say it was gas powered. Some people would still hate it because it's so incredibly different which is one of the reasons I love it so much. It's out of the box. It's, a, as Jason said, a middle finger to all the other pickup trucks. And it works. And so do the Yokohama tires. I've been running them on and off my whole career. Yokohama is a premium brand. It's not a come lately. And it's, it's always been at the top of both street tires and performance tires. And I trust them on my race cars. I actually did a thing called the One Lap of America twice on Yokohama tires where we're driving 3,500 miles to 12 track days and you're not allowed to change your tires. They have something called an AD09. That's a 200 tread wear tire that's meant to have performance and last. And they have an A052 that has performance faster than any other tire there is in the 200 tread wear category. So Yokohama is everywhere. And the EV tire I've been driving on my Tesla for the last two weeks and 2,000 miles is a no compromise tire. It does everything better and it's a high performance tire. I thought it might feel a little 
squishy, you know, sidewall flex. There would be some sort of um, indicator that this was an EV tire. I don't notice a difference. Uh, and, and if anything, it's better than the non-EV tire, and it's certainly not worse. And Drew promises it's going to last, what did you say? 35,000 miles? 35,000 okay. 35, miles, as long as you take care of it, a, right? Yeah. Rotation. Wow. Well, Ray, Randy's going to beat it up. Let's just be <laughs> quite honest. Proper inflation <laughs> pressure. Yeah, Randy's not the <laughs> no. long-distance guy. He's 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 more of a sprint than a marathon. But all joking aside, like you said, that one lap, what a great Steve. testimonial there. And that's not EV, but this this conversation dude uh, randy you're you're a consummate professional drew you have such great knowledge uh i i think we should get you back on maybe uh maybe after the hill climb and see you know a testimonial to to what yokohama's got cooking what randy popes has got cooking because you're 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 all you can race buffet baby you got a lot of things but again he is vegetarian so there's no meat on that platter there you go. <laughs> just just veggies just veggies he eats, he eats like a moose uh but Randy, thank you so much, man. Uh, I, I've had a lot of fun. Big and strong, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> Drew, thank you so much, Yokohama yeah, Tire, for all your support, uh, including Nitro Cross and, and all the motorsports that you do, including Pikes Peak Hill Climb and supporting this maniac that is Randy Popes. So uh, check out Yokohama Tire, uh, Electrify Expo, Randy Popes, P O B S T. Again, talking about that German on the front end. But uh, thank you so much, guys. And thank you, Jared. Thank you, Drew. Thanks, guys. Had fun. Thanks for listening to the Electrify podcast, brought to you by the creators of Electrify Expo. Be sure to catch full video episodes on YouTube at Electrify TV and follow along on social media for daily clips and more.